This is not the time for napping. Damn. Hello, everybody. Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all, King's Quest Six. So we made it inside the castle, finally, uh, on our way towards the good ending. Uh, we evaded guard dogs. We helped out a little ghost boy. We discovered a mysterious door. And, of course, Angiallo. Giallo occupies himself with his writing, but the frown on his brow indicates his anxiety about the fate of his beloved princess. Hey, uh, Giallo, do you want to help us out with something? Is there anything else you can do that will help me in the castle? I'm afraid not, Prince Alex. One will get past the guard dogs easier than two. Besides, I'm not much of a fighter. <laughs> but if you intend to do as you've said, you should lose no time about it. The wedding will be starting before you know it. So on his own, Jallo really can't do all that much. However, he did mention at one point that if he had a duplicate of the, the lamp, then he might be able to do a little switcheroo because he's a jester and I guess that means they have quick hands because of juggling and stuff. Well, we, because of our clairvoyance, we know exactly what the genie's lamp looked like. And now, it is yours, my friend. I've been thinking of what you said about swapping a replica for the genie's lamp. I got this lamp from the old lamp seller in town. Do you think it will pass? Why, yes! It's an exact replica! That's amazing! How did you guess? I don't know! I suppose it was intuition. Hmm. Um. I'll have to wait for the right moment, mind you. But I should be able to get close enough to swap this for the real thing. And none shall be the wiser. Now you shall see Jallo's skill. I'm sure your hands are mightier than my sword, my clever friend. <laughs> Go ahead and do as you've planned, and let me worry about swapping the lamp. If I accomplish the trickery, I'll manage to get the lamp to you somehow. You never fear. I have faith, Jollo. You are a true friend. Ah, oh, shucks. I'd do anything for the princess. Well, what about me? I thought we were buddies. Are you just doing this for the princess and not me? All right, well, bye, Jollo. So, I think... As a man true to his word, we do see him again for a quick second while he uh, does his little lamp switcheroo, but now we're free to root around his office, hey. Alexander doesn't want to intrude on Jallo's privacy by looking through his trunk. Oh, even his underwear have little jingly bells on them. The comfortable looking bed in the corner is neatly arranged. It looks just large enough for Jallo's generous size. Jallo's bedroom is spacious, neat, and lush with dramatic colors. Like its resident, there's a melancholy sheen to its brightness. Well, that's kind of dark. I think if there were nothing really going on as far as intrigue and murder in the castle, then yeah, just you, you, you wouldn't see anything wrong with it. No, well, Jolly, unless he just sort of secretly battles with depression. A chandelier hangs down from the tall ceiling. How on earth does Jallo reach that thing to light it? Alexander can't reach the chandelier. Hmm, trickery indeed. What's this poster? Is this for like the circus in town maybe? That would be kind of cute. The wall above Jallo's desk sports a notice of a circus. It seems very old. Oh, maybe some uh, little backstory. I can't read it, huh? The wall... No. The circus notice belongs to Jallo. A large red rug with gold trim helps buffer the coldness of the marble floor underfoot. Mm, always secrets under the rug. Alexander couldn't possibly carry that heavy rug with him. Besides, Jallo might miss it. He said I could take any rug in the house. A cozy little fire is ablaze in Jallo's fireplace. And burn a perfectly good hand. <laughs> okay, that's kind of cute. Snap, crackle, pop. He didn't even try to, like, onomatopoeia it properly. He's like, snap, crackle, pop. You can't be like, <laughs> that's how the pros do it. Even though I'm far from a pro, you're probably more pro than I am. Bye, Jallo. Okay, now we can go back to exploring. Now, I think if we go up there, that sets uh, some events into motion that I don't think we can stop. So we'll wait on that for a sec. From the East Hall, Alexander hears the sounds of a door opening and a guard's footsteps trudging heavily down a flight of stairs. Very stealthy, these guys. That means it's going to be coming this way before too long, so we should scram. What's in here? A closed door on the north wall bears a small brass plaque. La Costa Lata? The plaque reads, Guard Room. Uh-oh. 
Oh, we should probably not do that. And by not, I mean immediately open it. Alexander hears the clear sound of guard dog voices coming from behind the door. He decides opening the door wouldn't be wise. I know it's not wise, that's why I want to do it. The door on the north wall does not respond. Fine. Alexander can't reach the stained glass windows. The colors of the stained glass windows glow with filtered light. Oh look, you can see sort of the artistic sort of pinky and yellow down there. What's taking this guard dog so long? I want to get caught and show it off, damn it. Fine, the guard dog doesn't want to arrest me. Fine, I don't want to be arrested by the guard dog. Since the door on the west wall has no visible knob or handle, Alexander decides to try to open it with his voice. He composes his words carefully. Open. Having chosen his words, Alexander uses them to firmly address the door. The door does not respond. Fine, have it your way. All right, so the guard dog's going that way, so I know where he is. And he's still walking. What is he doing? Is he crawling? Uh, uh. Alexander hears the guard go into a room off the north hall, shutting the door behind him. That's even slower. That means, look. So we enter the north hall. It was like a good minute before we reached this door, so it was just like, eh. 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 Uh, yeah, see, that took like three minutes. All right, so before we go look at the Man of Steel, uh, let me test this theory that looking up here sets things into motion. I might be wrong, but I think we peer through the keyhole here or listen to the door. There's a door at the top of the stairs that must lead to an upper floor. Well, the door has a doorknob and a keyhole. Wow, this door that's up the stairs must lead to an upstairs area. Yeah, brilliant jerk. Alexander peeks through the keyhole. There are two guard dogs talking in what appears to be a large hall. Two guard dogs are talking in what appears to be a large hall. Well, that's what you said. Yeah, but I want to I wanna hear. The door to the second level does not respond. Ah, uh, well. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hi. Uh-oh. Guard dogs. Got an intruder. Grab him. Uh... I was just looking for the kitchen. I'll bet you're the foreign saboteur the wazir warned us about. Pilgrim. He sure fits the description. He's supposed to be dangerous, Mike. Let's throw him in the dungeon, then go tell Captain Saladin. Right. Good idea. Yeah. Oh. You'll stay in here until we find out what the wazir wants to do with you. The guard dogs leave Alexander to his fate, locking the door noisily behind them. That's... Alexander wonders how he'll get out of this one. Honestly, I'm not sure if I do. Spider, can you help me out? King Spider? No, oh, bye. There he is. Psst. Prince Alex. Gallo. What are you doing here? Never mind. Quick, before the guard dog patrol comes around again. How did you know I was... This is no place to talk, Alexander. Just trust that I know everything that goes on in this castle. Now, be more careful. If you get caught again, I don't know if I'll be able to get you out. There we go. So I was right. So you do get a, a get-out-of-jail-free card from Jalo, but if you get caught again, yeah, that's it. It's, it's, it's pretty much game over. But let's pretend that never happened. Alternate universe... Here we are back in the real world. Okay, so let's, uh, since barring we can't go up there, since the guard dogs are chilling out in the hall, let's uh, examine the uh, Man of Steel. In the corner is a suit of armor of ancient design. Its right arm beckons slightly. And no one's ever tried to shake hands with it, ever? There is no one inside the suit of armor to talk to. All right. Alexander examines the suit of armor, but sees nothing special. Oh, interesting. So you've actually got to click on the arm itself. Cute. Uh-oh, uh -oh, a guard dog. Alexander's been seen. Well, I thought you were already in the room. Hey, you! You're not allowed down here! Uh, kitchen? I was just looking for the kit. Uh, Alexander, you can run. Come on, it's just a big loop. You can you can do this forever. Go, go, go. All right, fine. Uh, I, I think I'm a little lost. I, I was looking for the wedding and... <clears throat> Be quiet. The wizard told us to look out for a saboteur. My nose tells me that's you. 
Guards! They'll never hear you. Oh, they're right there. Alexander watches helplessly as the guards descend upon him. You'll stay in here until we... The guard dog. Ow. Let's be a little faster. Remembering what the little boy ghost said, Alexander experiments with the suit of armor. He pushes down, then pulls up on the knight's right arm. A secret passage. Aha! Like any good castle. And automatically in I go. Alexander hears the sound of voices coming from nearby. Now what I like about this section is A, even though this is like a hidden secret area, they just have this beautiful mustard yellow paint on the walls. I just think this is such a great design decision. The old walls are dirty and show the neglect of a forgotten place. The wall has deteriorated significantly in this area, leaving a chink in the wall. Yeah, 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 we see that. Alexander is standing in a secret passage of the Castle of the Crown. The landing is dusty and the walls are deteriorating. To the south is the door to the basement. A staircase to the north leads up to another floor. Now, I think there's a way that you can still go back. And honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I think this little mustard yellow staircase is the most important area in the entire game because you learn everything from these little chinks in the walls. Alexander peers through the I like the how when you the stand wall. there, you block the light. That's just such an awesome touch. Captain, I've been hearing rumors from the guards who've been watching the princess. <laughs> they say Graham? lately she's been pounding on her door and begging to be let out. Ain't none of my business, sir, but news like that is upsetting the other dogs. Ain't no guard in the castle who would willingly keep the princess anywhere she don't want to be. Mm, Hazred claims that a foreign intruder is here to assassinate her. That's why she's got to be kept under lock and key right up until the wedding. Call me an old dog that can't learn new tricks, but I say the princess should be the one given the orders. Yeah. Al Hazred has been in charge for months, what with the king's death and Kasima's mourning. Tonight, the wedding will seal it, and there's nothing we can do about it. Like him or not, he's our liege. Need I remind you of your oath to the crown? Aye, we've an oath. For the sake of the princess, we'll not be forgetting it. He'd just better treat her well. Speaking of the wazir, what do you reckon he's keeping in that That's magic room? All I can hear is King Graham. That's it. It's not a magic room. It's just the door he's enchanted somehow. I say he's still got the royal treasury in there, along with whatever else he's so eager to protect. Not even the court treasurer is allowed in there anymore. Suspicious. I heard him in the hall the other day. He was speaking to that door. Black magic is what I say. I heard him say, Ali, but then Bay came up and started yapping at me. Enough! It is not our place to question the practices of our liege, no matter how strange. The wedding will be starting soon. Report to the throne room when you hear the music start. Oh, oh, interesting. So they actually kind of put it back there on the screen so you know. So I heard him say Ali, but then he got interrupted. Interesting. So maybe we can learn. I don't think that's the entire password. There's something else in the second part of it. So we have to learn that so we can get in there. Because that's also, I think, very important to the best ending of the game. There's a lot of variations of it, depending on what you do and do not discover. But let's keep looking around. Up we go. And Phew, wouldn't you know it? That was a climb. Another chink Alexander in the wall. Alexander hears the faint sound of a woman crying nearby. Oh, <gasps> could it be? Alexander peers through the chinks in the wall, trying to locate the source of the crying sounds. Alexander's palms begin to sweat and his heart to race. It's Cosima. He's found her. Finally. Nice room. Psst. Princess Cosima. What? Who's there? You look just like your it mother. It is I, Alexander. I'm here behind this wall. My, how suave that sounds. Yeah, you planned that out well. Alexander? It looks like a little happy face. Uh, uh. It really is you. Oh, I knew you were close by, but how did you get inside the castle walls? Can you not scream? It's a long story and not important now. You did get my ring. Aww. Oh, yes. 
It has brought me such comfort, Alexander. That to know sounds close by and had not really sarcastic. Oh, it's but brought me such you. comfort, You're Alexander. You're endangering yourself. I don't care about the danger. I would brave anything to learn. What is it? I, I was going to say. Uh, Hazard, do you want to wed him, Kasima? Oh, please believe me when I say that I never agreed to marry that man. Even when my father trusted Abdul absolutely, I never liked him. But with mother and father gone, I'm afraid there's no stopping him. If you do not wish to marry him, Kasima, you shall not. I promise you. Only come with me now, and we shall escape. How? I cannot fit through this wall. Besides, do you think I could leave my kingdom, my people, in Abdul's hands? But Abdul would tear the castle apart if I were to disappear from my room. You shall have to do what you can to delay his plans from your end. I can't just leave you here. Alexander, do not despair from me. I have been safe in this room for nearly six months now. Abdul can be in no hurry, whatever he plans. After all, I'm to be his bride, am I not? I have been planning too, you see. I believe I can escape. If I can only get a chance to lay my hands on a weapon, there might be an opportunity in the hustle of the wedding. But I... Shh, just a moment more, then you must go. Let us not waste time with words. Please, let me just look at you, dear Alexander. Oh yeah, out of the friend zone at last. Now what's kind of cool about this little scene is that you only see it once, so if there's like anything to do or look at or see, you've only got one small window of opportunity. Because it's a, it's a window, you see. Alexander looks with longing at the fair Cosima. She's even more beautiful than he remembered. Alexander stands in the secret passageway, so close yet so far from his heart's desire. Oh no! Someone's coming! Oh, lost your chance. The lock on Cosima's door rattles abruptly. Alexander, hurry! Step away before they see you! Alexander hears scuffling and a woman's brief cry from the other side of the wall. Then, silence. So now Kasima's been taken away for the wedding, quote unquote, but you've also lost your only window of opportunity to, again, uh, I think, actually, if you don't give her a weapon, I think you may put the game in an unwinnable state. I might be wrong. Oh, we have so many experiments to do. But rewinding here, take this little knife. Actually, is there anything I can do to like, well, what can I do just to mess with her? Um, here, take my magic bat. That'll get you out. Although Alexander would gladly offer Cosima all that he owns, that item would be of little help to her now. All right, fine. Here, take the weapon which you so sorely need, not the flower. Here, take this dagger. It's not much, but it might come in handy. Yoink. Why, it's perfect. This is just the sort of thing I've been looking for. Thank you, Alexander. I'll keep it close and use it if I must. And you can still kind of look at her longingly if you want to, but there's nothing much else you can do until she gets taken away. So that's been taken care of. And I think there's one more stop in our little illicit secret passage spying session. Not here, or is it? The old walls are dirty and show. It just looks like there's something here. Alexander. But there's not. I think this corridor is just here for show. But around here, aha. Alexander hears the sound of scratching coming from the other side of the wall. Ah, damn mice. Alexander looks through the chink in the wall. Ah, there is the man himself with a rhino and a black cloak. Oh. Dear Shadrach, salutations from the Society of the Black Cloak, etc., etc. My long preparations are about to come to fruition. In a matter of minutes, I will wed the lovely... <laughs> Kasima. Once I've established my power and my crown, I can stage another accident. I like how in between sentences he pauses to dip his quill. The princess has proven infuriatingly stubborn, as you know. She's becoming quite a dangerous little thorn in my side. 
In a way, it is a shame I have to kill her. She is lovely and would be amusing to keep around, but I can't risk her talking treason to one of the guards. So far, I've managed to keep her locked away, but I can't continue that forever. Well, on to it now. I'd send her to you, but as you know, I had no luck in doing so with Mordak. I close in triumph. King Abdul Alhazred. That line kind of confuses me. What does that mean with Mordak? I think it's about time to see if Shamir has taken care of the wench as I asked. It's almost time for the wedding. You sure talk to yourself a lot, Alhazred. The wazir's words fill Alexander with blazing anger and fear for Kasima's life. That blackguard! That murderous swine! He'll not have his way if I have anything to say about it. All right, so he has gone out of his room and he pretty much told us his entire plan. So that letter he was writing, which he left on his desk like an idiot, is, I think, all the evidence I need of his wrongdoing, the blackguard. Uh, so, oh, yeah, there's that obviously discolored wall. So it looks like Alhazred actually does make use of this uh, little highway fairly often. There's a vague outline of what appears to be a door on the wall. Alexander sees lots of black cloaks. Ah, the Black Cloak Society again. Wait, is this the same room? No, no, his office is over there. This is his bedroom, I think. Alexander is standing in a masculine bedroom. Polished marble walls rise to meet a tall ceiling, and the furnishings have an opulent feeling. He wonders whose bedroom this is. Well, with all the black cloaks, um, well, again. Whatever. Put two and two together. A candlelit chandelier lends a soft light to the bedroom. It's almost kind of romantic if it wasn't owned by a murderer. A canopied bed arranged with silk bedclothes and large pillows stands in one corner of the room. Those pillows are huge. There doesn't seem to be anything on the bed except for a lot of silk. All right, I'm not sure how long we're allowed to be here, so we should probably make this snappy. Let's take a peek around. The trunk is locked. Uh, don't I have a skeleton key? Isn't that a thing? Yes, I think that's what this is, right? The skeleton key is made out of small bones. Mm, let's see if a skeleton key indeed is a skeleton key. Alexander inserts the skeleton key in the trunk's lock and turns it. He hears a click. I wonder where the term skeleton key came from. Some sort of weird mythology that just means a key that can open anything? What's in here? It looks like the owner of this trunk is quite the correspondent. The stack of letters appears to be ordered by date because the top one is dated only a month ago. Evidence! A few worn leather books occupy the trunk. The top one is entitled Guidebook to the Land of the Green Isle. A book like that might have been a big help when Alexander first arrived. The trunk's owner obviously found it interesting too for the guidebook is dog-eared and stained. Mm, he's probably trying to pass the same puzzles I did, which is how he got away with all of his dastardly deeds. A small glass bottle filled with oily-looking perfume is in one corner of the trunk. Well, I guess they can't all be really interesting. All right, let's find some evidence. Alexander picks up the most recent letter and examines it. The letter is addressed to Abdul Alhazred from the wizard Shadrach. It reads... Greetings to a brother of the Black Cloak. I was sorry to hear of Great Mordak's death, though he was a bit of a ninny at chess. It seems the plans for that little kingdom of yours are coming along. I must congratulate you on your handling of the king and queen. Isolating the island so that no protest could develop was another brilliant stroke. It looks like there's not much left to stand in your way. Do as I recommended with the girl, and you shall have your crown. That fiend! Ah, all right. Evidence. Got it. Now, what's this blue th thing? There's a box of ebony on the table. Does that mean there's a box with ebony in it, or the box is made of ebony? Alexander opens the ebony box and looks inside. He finds ebony. Uh, ooh, it's his dice. He's a d and -er. There's an old bottle of black ink among the box's trinkets. Inside the ebony box is a piece of paper with the word Zebu printed on it. Ah, I think that's the second part of the little door password. I think so. A worn old brush is among the box's trinkets. 
Interesting. Ink and brush and dice. Some old ivory dice have been left in the box. What does it mean? I don't know, but that's what we came here for. Well, the, well we got the letter too. A fire in a small hearth warms the bedroom. Oh, why? That pillow was obviously on the bed. Why did he throw it over here? Did he have a nightmare? A large, soft cushion has been strategically placed on the cold marble floor to provide a comfy seat near the fire. I don't understand this castle's want of cold marble floors. It seems, you know, if you're going to live in opulence, you might as well just, you know, put some carpet down. Well, I guess they did. All right, let's get out of here. Oh, I'm kind of curious what's out that door. Alexander steps confidently out into the upstairs hallway and sees two guard dogs. Probably should have looked at the keyhole. Hey, who the... Sorry. Um, hello there. Don't just stand there. Grab him, bae. Ah, well, at least I know where this door leads now. Uh, I'll bet it's that saboteur fellow the wizard warned us about. I say we run him through right here and now. No. Woof. Woof. <laughs> wizard will run you through if he doesn't get a chance at the prisoner. Let's put him in the dungeon for safekeeping, then we'll go tell the captain. Aye, Wolf, you're right. Let's go. Ugh. Okay, let's be a little bit more smart. A door leads into the hall. Oh, he just instinctively there's knows. There's a keyhole in the door. It goes into the hall. Okay, but there's a keyhole. Good. Alexander peers through the keyhole. Should have done that before. I played enough stealth games to know. Aha. Uh -huh. That, does that mean they're gone? No, nope, they patrol. Oh, they just go back and forth. Uh-huh. Alexander crawls back through the wardrobe to reach the secret passage. Now let's go check out that door. That always seemed kind of risky to me because you can't look out and see if there's a guard in that hallway before you just sort of like pop out of the wall. All right, door. Since the door on the west wall had... Yeah, 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 we know that. Okay, so it was Ali... Zebu. How come this door is not QWERTY? Listen, door. I would have you open. Ali Zebu. It worked. What is Ali Zebu? Is that, is, that a, is that a thing? I don't know. Okay, so this is the secret room that... Uh, Hazard's been sort of squirreling away that no one else is allowed to. Not It's the treasury room, and not even the treasurer's allowed in here anymore. Alexander is standing in the Castle of the Crown's treasure room. The soft-toned room seems very secure. Along the walls are trunks and caskets, probably full of the kingdom's treasure. In the middle of the room is a low table. Yeah, 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 I know that's super obvious, but I want to take a look around. Decorative shields and spears made of gold hang on the treasure room walls. There's no one in the treasure room to talk to. Alexander doesn't need the gold shield and spears. Besides, the soft gold wouldn't stand up well in a real battle. Mm, that's very true. Graceful urns adorn the cool treasure room. It is pretty cool in here, isn't it? Ooh, a horn. A gracefully curled trumpet hangs on the wall. Oh, you know you need that. That's too... It's too... Alas, the trumpet won't bring these walls tumbling down, and thus is of little use to Alexander. Why can't this castle be Jericho? Alexander has no wish to steal from the treasury of the land of the Green Isles. It might be under the wizard's control now, but it still belongs to the people. So the treasury... Are they, these old, like, trunks and steamer trunks just, like, full of gold? Those trunks probably contain the kingdom's treasure, once guarded so well and used so wisely by King Caliphim, now in the hands of that blackguard El Hazred. Blackguard. I like how, the, how blackguard is always pronounced blackguard, like B-L-A-G-G-A-R-D, blackguard. All right, fine, that's all there is to see. A small table graces the middle of the room. The table is covered by a velvet drapery. The initials AA are embroidered on the drapery. As if they had to make it any more obvious, why would he get like a special embroidered velvet curtain just to hide his illicit affairs? There's no one in- All right, fine. Alexander pulls the drapery aside, curious as to what might lie underneath. Now my magic trick. Hurra! I like how he just like stands back and shakes his head. It's like, that son of a... On the table is a coat of arms with the head of a beast on the crest. Hmm. Beast said that his coat of arms was stolen by the druids. 
This must be it. On the table is a miniature oak tree. It looks very old. Hmm. That must be the sacred miniature oak that the druids thought the winged ones stole. On the table is a strange-looking stone that's giving off an odd, high-pitched noise. That must be the Isle of Wonders singing stone. Didn't the queens think that the beast had stolen it? On the table is a fleece made of gold. That fleece must belong to the winged ones. And they thought the Isle of Wonder had taken it. As Alexander looks at the objects on the table, he realizes the depth of the wazir's cunning. It must have been the wazir or an accomplice who stole that one thing most precious to each island and then leaked rumors that one of the other islands was responsible. What did the wazir have to gain by causing the islands to hate one another? We learned that already. But still, if you don't look at each item individually and realize, or at least make Alexander realize, that what that what the vizier had done, or I guess in this case what the genie had done, even though you get into the room and discover it, it doesn't count unless you come to this realization. Alexander decides to leave Beast's coat of arms here in the treasure room until it can be returned to its owner. Alexander decides... Yeah, 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 okay, so leave it all here. So now this is what we came to know. So al Hazred stolen all the treasures blamed all the other islands for it so they can bicker amongst themselves and not have a chance to rise up against him and try and stop the wedding. <sighs> Clever. Alexander hears the sound of music coming from the east. It sounds somewhat classical, but... Oh no, it's wedding music. Oh no. Alexander hears a door off the north hall open. Then, the sound of guard dog footsteps. The footsteps are headed this way. Yep, they said once the music starts, all guard dogs be present, so we better amscribe. Alexander hears the sound of a guard's footsteps coming from the north. Wait, there are more footsteps approaching from the west. Now what? Uh oh, uh, up we go. I'm cornered. Get up there. There's a door at the top of the door. Uh, what's going on through the keyhole now? Alexander P. There is no one on the other side of the door. Ah, perfect. Okay. Yeah, that's our chance. There is In we go. We got to stop this wedding now. Alexander looks cautiously around the Grand Hall, but there are no guard dogs to be seen. Excellent. The wedding music is coming from behind those two large doors. Uh-oh. Hey, Saladin. Uh-oh. Prince Alexander, here. The wizier will have my head for allowing you within a mile of the royal wedding. Since you are of noble birth, I will give you five seconds to explain your presence here before killing you. I warn you, it had better be good. Well, well you see, the, 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 the wizier, he stole all the stuff and make all the islands fight against her and things. And then uh, Sima, like she, like, she really loves me and everything. She doesn't want to get married and everything. And you give me no excuse to save your life, Prince Alexander. You were told to stay away from the castle, but you chose not to listen. I have no choice but to obey the wizier. But Saladin... Um, Sally? Oh. <laughs> A quick little scream. Tickets. Oh. Next. Evidently, Saladin is a dog to be reckoned with. Okay, let's give this another try. Let's actually let Alexander do the talking. Captain Saladin, consider. I know you cannot be blind to the Wazir's true nature. Mm, my personal feelings have nothing to do with it. I serve the crown. Captain Saladin. Mm. Nope, I cannot convince him otherwise. Give me no but oh boy, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? So we gotta convince Saladin to let us inside the wedding and stop everything. Um, I don't know how we're gonna do that. Okay, so let's take a little bit of time to think about that. We'll take a break and then we'll resume. Uh-oh. Oh, the guard dogs are coming now too. Oh, things are getting even more and more dire for our poor Prince Alexander. Whatever will we do? <gasps> Good night, Jelly Beans. Good night.